I always close my concert with this if you haven't been here before. It's the Alabama Jubilee. It's about a party, and I love this. The chimes will ring, and it tells us it's time for snacks and cheese. <laughs> organist and pianist at Trinity United Methodist Church here in Huntsville, Alabama. My friend Linda Young gave me a call yesterday and said, 
would you mind talking a little bit about entertainment and you know performance and so I said I would love to and share a few of my ideas and thoughts on the ideas of performance first starting out I'm not a great person at performing with words on the camera so I especially speak to you pianist and instrumentalist because we don't really have to breathe like singers so as you can see I get nervous and I run out of breath talking on the on the microphone or what have you it's easy to record you know my hands and just doing the sound but that leads me to the first part of performance which I think is relaxation and you know being ready so performance anxiety and being nervous are quite different from one another I find that you know being relaxed on stage takes you know a little bit of time you'll notice some of the great concert pianists especially they give really bad first parts of recitals because you know they're they're getting used to their audience and same with me so sometimes I choose really fast stuff because I know I'm gonna play too fast but I try to just you know get myself centered I walk to the instrument try to be sitting up and stand up straight and forthright and engage with the audience with my eyes you know and greet people unless I don't like somebody out there but <laughs> that's neither here nor there so as I'm gonna do now I would say I'm going to pretend I'm walking out and you know I'm sure I'm going to sweat a lot of pianists I'm seeing now are bowing from behind the piano um, you can bow and acknowledge. I wouldn't do a full bow until you prefer, perform. Then I would sit and breathe just a minute. Yeah. And then think of my first selection. Think, okay, I'm gonna have a little performance nerve. What am I gonna do? I need to breathe and think of the fastest or most complicated part of the piece that I'm going to perform and think about th that speed, what I want it to be, rather than what I'm actually gonna play because your heart is probably gonna be going quite a bit faster. You want to appear relaxed too, so don't be, you know. Yeah, <laughs> you don't want that. You wanna be kind of relaxed and just confident. <sighs> Take a breath and you know, just kind of center yourself, just let yourself be. And then think about the pace you're going to play. For instance, I'm going to play on the street where you live. talk to you about a few things that first portion of on the street where you live you know I had some mistakes especially when I did things like that. sometimes I'm gonna miss that or and that lick here is from the revolutionary etude of Chopin you know, what have you so it's tricky I missed a few notes so one thing I like to tell younger people, especially when you mess up, if you have a wrong note, which is gonna happen, you have 88 keys to deal with, it's gonna happen. I do it all the time. So you don't wanna do, you know, and make an obvious face. And when you're playing something more engaging, especially with you singers, you need to connect with the audience so sometimes i wink or i'll smile which is kind of cheesy and for us keyboardists sometimes that can be tricky like patting your stomach and rubbing your head or whatever that is so you want to take 
you know, you want to practice these things. Get in front of the mirror, especially if you have a practice room, and watch yourself. Are you engaging with yourself in the mirror? I have something I call the three E's. Entertain, enlighten, and enjoy. So, firstly, you've got to think of your audience. We want to entertain them. That's what they're here for. We're here to send them on a vacation. They've taken their time out of their day or evening to come listen to us perform, and we're grateful for that. So we want them to have a good time. We want them to be out of their head. You know, if they had a bad day, our job is to kind of let them forget about that. So you want to know your music so well and be prepared that if you do mess up or get lost, especially if you're playing by memory, you have a an insurance policy. You know where to go or make something up. And then you want to enlighten them, especially those of us, uh, well, I don't sing, but singers especially and instrumentalists, when you phrase and breathe, and when you phrase on the piano, you want it to sound like words. Um, well, you singers, of course, but you want to make your words to where they mean something. Rather, I went to the store today. Rather, than, I went to the store today. That way you would think, oh, what did you get? It's so wonderful. On the piano, you can do. Or you can give some meaning to even a skill. You know, give it a shape. We want that. You want to apply all those minute details to your performance. And that kind of lets the audience think, oh, they really know their craft. They really know how to take us somewhere. And then, you want them to enjoy it. You want it, you, you know, unless you're doing really an academic recital, I see no sense, even in an academic setting, I see no sense in making it so cerebral that people can't enjoy themselves. You know, uh, especially, you know, like a Bach concert. You don't have to be. are very guilty of getting really into themselves and just for them rather than projecting this even to the audience. You don't have to be so introverted. You can play it in a more outward fashion. You can acknowledge the audience. Nobody said that when you play classical music that you have to be serious. There's, there's no reason you can't be lively and full of joy. You know, you can be serious, but it doesn't have to be pretentious. You know. to move and enjoy the music it's going to project onto your audience one thing when I think of a full concert overall I like to believe that those people that came and spent their time with me I like to think of two things firstly when I walk out onto the stage I want to get I want to get comfortable and then I want to think these people are in my living room I'm here to entertain and I love to have guests at my house so I like to you know, put on a show and be friendly. And so they're in my space. So when people come to your house, you want them to feel welcome, you know, those, uh, especially those that work in churches or schools. When you do a concert, you don't want people just to be nervous. Oh gosh, I just don't know what to do here. You want them to feel at home and relaxed. So you have that presence about yourself. Be relaxed about yourself. But the main goal at the end of the night or the end of the performance, do those people feel better than they did when they had arrived? Do they feel like, oh wow, that was so wonderful. That was nice. It's so good to relax for a few minutes. Or do they feel like, oh well, I guess that was interesting. I don't wanna waste my time going to another concert. Our duty as an artist that shares with the public is you know to help people you know to bring beauty into their lives for a few moments that's our job and that's a job that we cannot take lightly and this goes for all settings of performance I believe whether it's in a church or a college the creative arts are not meant 
are not meant to necessarily make you in a bad mood, but some are meant to make you feel pensive. However, my, my job, and especially musical arts, I really am on the side of enlightenment and enjoyment and, and you know, showing people a great time. I hope that these few little ideas that I have about playing the piano I, or performance in general, I hope they've helped you. And I love my friend Linda Young and I, I would do anything for her. She's a wonderful musician and you should all consider yourselves very fortunate to be at her studio. This next piece I'm gonna play for you is a piece that's very special to me because Linda Young taught it to me. She's the only person that can sing it and she's the only person that I'll listen to sing it. This is an improvisation, which means I'm on camera or I'm on stage and I've taken this piece that she sang and I do have the sheet music, sort of, <laughs> and I'm improvising upon it and making a concert version. You'll hear probably a lot of lots of wrong notes and some, some awkward sections because I'm also playing the vocal part and the piano part. So I hope you enjoy it. It's a very special song and I hope one day soon after all this COVID madness that I get to perform this with Linda again. Thank you for having me. It has been a real pleasure and a joy and interesting to me to learn to process all these things that we do as performers. I hope the best for every one of you and uh, peace and joy to each of you. Good night.